Okay, in the last video I looked at um, the overall um, effects of noradrenaline, how it's synthesized in the brain and the receptors that it, um, it attaches to. Um, so I thought what we might look at today is the presynaptic neuron and uh, a little bit more around um, how tyrosine uh, is changed into noradrenaline and the drugs that act um, on that uh, within the neuron itself, or very close to it. So, um, start off with a slightly bigger version of the same neuron. Um, okay, so, uh, start with tyrosine out here, which crosses into the neuron and is acted upon by tyrosine hydroxylase. Um, so this changes the structure of uh, the tyrosine into dopa. Okay? So if we want to if we had we have a drug it blocks the action of this. Right. So I use this symbol to kind of denote that it's blocking, and that's alpha methyl tyrosine. Um, and that's used um, for people who have excessive adrenal um, production. Um, so dopa is synthesized into dopamine. Um, now, you might have heard of L-DOPA, which is a DOPA precursor, um, which is given to patients, say, with um, Parkinson's, um, to increase the levels of dopamine in the brain, because you can't give dopamine directly. Um, it won't cross the blood-brain barrier. But L-DOPA will. Um, so people are given L-DOPA, um, you know, it's uh, synthesized, um, it, it's used in the neuron then to create dopamine. And we'll come back to that in a second. So, what acts on this to change it into this is dopa decarboxy. Um, now, uh, okay, so it's all well and good, you want to give extra dopamine to somebody. Um, and you want it directly to affect only brain function. Um, but when we when people take L-DOPA, it causes excess dopamine in the peripheral system as well. So we just want it in the central nervous system. So um, there's a drug called Carbidopa, um, which acts to block this in the peripheral nervous system. So it only affects the body. So I always like to think of Carbidopa as um, it's kind of the worst um, version of antlers I've ever seen but as a, a dopey caribou um, so the dopey caribou stops the dopa decarboxylase um, and it's called carbidopa uh, so right uh, so dopamine is synthesized and then we have another step um, and we've got dopamine beta hydroxylase. Okay, um, so no particular drugs that work directly on this one. And this goes to noradrenaline, which is what we want in obviously a noradrenaline neuron. Now, noradrenaline. So it's stored down here in the in the in the neuron in vesicles, right? So each of these vesicles has a number of noradrenaline molecules in them. Okay? Now um respirin, uh, which is synthesized from a bush. And what that does is it stops the transport of these vesicles 
into the um, into the section of the neuron and stops the release. So that's another drug that we use to cut down on noradrenaline in the body. Um, so, uh, what else is there that can... Um, oh, there's the fantastic... Um, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Um, there are on each of these vesicles little tags that allow them to connect to the wall and therefore, you know, uh, release, you know, uh, during an action potential. And we've got this, there is a drug called guanethidine, which blocks release by acting on those to stop them from um, releasing. And of course I got something wrong. There is a drug that works on dopamine decarboxylase and it's called methyl methyl dopa and it's used to treat primarily hypertension and um and to prevent um uh, contractions. So prolonged pregnancies. Um, so those are the drugs. Um, and uh, in the next one, we're going to move on to the drugs that affect what goes on out here in the synapse. Because it's plenty.